Hello, my friends. It's me again. <laughs> it's difficult. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening, but the video that I was doing just disconnected. And uh, I'm trying to reconnect now, but uh, it dropped all of you off. It's uh, very, very, very upsetting. But uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's going to do this again. <sighs> I have five bars in the internet here, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't uh, get bad. But what can I do? So if you started seeing this video, it's a continuation of the previous video. We are studying Among Brothers of Other Lands, Chapter 12 advanced the cultures and moral disasters it's a text of emmanuel and uh, as i said i'm having technical difficulties so the video disconnect by itself and um, i'm hoping this one is not going to do it i really don't know what to happen it's very tough i feel very frustrated <laughs> but i will persevere so I was reading the the chapter and uh, I will pick up where I stopped so it's talking about uh, suicide and insanity and it's saying this is uh, two very big moral disasters from materialism and then Emmanuel continues saying this happens because human beings do not supply themselves with spiritual reserves at the expense of machines to withstand the friction necessary to evolution and conflicts resulting from the regenerating struggle. Humanity needs to feed itself with resources of the soul to rely on them so in this uh, little piece here uh, my friends if you are joining now my video is not working it's crazy today it's really wild um, but I hope you can listen to me and maybe you can see me but I cannot see myself I'm hoping it's not gonna disconnect so this beautiful text of Emmanuel is talking that in this modern society of nowadays, it's, it's so fast, technology is so fast, like one, two, three, one, two, three. Anything that happened in China, in Japan, few seconds later, we know. It's amazing. Uh, yesterday I was talking to my friend that uh, I feel that I am leaving the cartoon called Jetsons. It was a cartoon when I was a child. So imagine how old it is. <laughs> so when I watch the Jetsons, everything that happened there, it's happening now. One of the things I was amazed was with the watch, Jetsons watch, that they could look at the watch, press a button, and they could talk to each other and see each other. So nowadays, you can do this with Apple Watch. You can see each other on the camera. Isn't that crazy? And, uh, and everything, the car that flies, it's like amazing. So it's just for you to understand that the technology moves really quickly. So people get so many different machines and, and you, 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 you become eager to get it too because yes, you wanna be part of the modern times. In the past, every single person survived without a cell phone it was normal people didn't have cell phones cell phones was something to very rich people especially in brazil very rich people had cell phones so i remember uh walking and seeing someone on a cell phone I was like oh <laughs> it was like amazing nowadays cell phone is something that every single person has cell phones because cell phones are very cheap and, and it's almost like something that's extremely important for you. 
Yes, yes, it is. It's very important. It's it's very good that we can be connected at any moment. Uh, somewhat, something happens, we can communicate immediately, but it's not essential to our lives. So what Emmanuel is saying is that we get so connected with material things, with machines, and we think the machines will bring us happiness. Whatever material important thing will bring us the happiness we need. And then you think you see a, a, a beautiful car, oh, if one day I have that car, I will be happy. Or if I will have the Apple Watch, I will be happy. Or if I have whatever, I will be happy. And the, this happiness is very temporary. Because yes, many times you are able to achieve whatever you dream of. You achieve that, you get very excited. And then it passes. The super excitement passes because you already got whatever you wanted. But now you want something else and something else and else and more and more and more. And it becomes like a, almost like a disease. We are in a, in a world, in a society, especially in America, that's very consumist, you know. You buy stuff. You get more and more. And this becomes like crazy. And uh, in reality, all these things don't bring happiness. What brings happiness is really what, what is within us. And like many medical studies nowadays show us, there is a, a lecture, super, super interesting, uh, of a, a man that he wanted to do a lecture on happiness, a research, not a lecture, a research. And then he started interviewing all kinds of extremely successful people, very, very successful in whatever, even a, a miss, like the most beautiful woman of a country. So most beautiful woman of a country, she must be happy. So he interviews her and he asks her, are you happy? And she actually said, yes. But then, he went into the scientific part that he put some kind of electrodes in the head of all those famous people, CEO of a company, this most beautiful woman of a, of a country, and many other uh, important and very successful people. And he does his test of many, many, many questions. And believe it or not, most of those people, they were not actually happy. And he couldn't understand. He's like, how is that possible? Why they are not happy? They are saying they are happy, but they are not answering the questionnaires like they were happy. So he went into research, and then he saw the most beautiful woman, for example. She was not happy because she was always stressed about what she's going to eat because she had to be super skinny forever, and she had to be beautiful Forever, what is very difficult. The CEO was always very stressed because his life is numbers. So if his numbers go down, his happiness was going down. So he was always stressed and many other things. And he couldn't discover what is to be happy. How can you be happy? Long, long, long story short, cut short, the, the, the concept of happiness after a long research, is really in bringing happiness to others. Yes, it's to be charitable. Isn't that funny? When you bring someone happiness, you become happy. So this is amazing, my friends. But this is true. Whenever you make somebody else happy, you feel super, super happy. Because you feel fulfilled, you feel realized, you feel like I was able to bring a smile to someone. So his research concluded the only way for us to find happiness is when, when we make someone else happy. So this is very, very connected to spiritism. Because we know in spiritism, the base of spiritism, is really charity, as Alain Kardec described it. He didn't describe without the church there is no salvation, without the, 
whatever. He said, without charity, there is no salvation. Salvation in the sense of uh, improvement, of getting better. So that's what we have to do. That's what we have to continue doing, bringing happiness to the others. And what is bringing happiness? Buying things to others? <laughs> we go back to the same thing we were talking about. Yes, buying something to others is a temporary happiness. It's a little happiness. Think about so many kids nowadays. The parents, because of this crazy society, the parents have to work full time. In the past, most of the mothers didn't work or they could choose not to work. Nowadays, basically, there is no choice. You have to work because everything is so expensive. Everything, it's difficult. And you, when you think about providing college, for example, for your kids in the future, you see the numbers, you're like, what? $100,000 a year? Who can afford that? Very few people in America can afford that. That's why the kids are going to college and they are leaving college full of bills, full of bills with bills for 30 years to pay. So they leave college already super stressed because they have a huge amount of money to pay and they don't even have a good full-time job because... They just graduated from college. So this is a, a crazy society. And then you're thinking, okay, so if we don't buy things, how are we going to leave? So as I was saying, the parents nowadays, they both work. They have very little time. So to compensate it, they end up buying things for their kids. They buy, buy, buy lots of things, lots of gifts computers, video games, and the kids become like machines in their video games. The kids are almost like losing that, uh, that thing of going out to play ball, going to the beach, going to the park, playing the snow. No, they are video game, video game, video game. Yes, it's very difficult. But scientists also already proved that uh, because the parents are so busy, they have to concentrate the little time they have to give to their kids. This is just an example. And they have to fully give attention to them. If you only have a few minutes a day, if after your super busy work, you only have 20, 30 minutes to give to your kids, forget about your cell phone, your computer. Just sit down with your kid and talk to him to her. If they're little, play with them. Demonstrate you love them. This is what will be with them forever. Memories. Why we love so much our grandmothers, grandfathers, because they are the ones who are much older and they usually hang out in our homes and we were little. A lot of them took care of us when our parents were busy. So we have this connection with our grandmothers and grandfathers. We remember when we were little, they're baking cakes or they're helping us with cookies or whatever. So these are memories that stay forever. So the parents, they have to do the same because our society is so crazy. So what happened? Going back to the text. Our lives are so wild, so crazy. Nobody has time to anything that's spiritual. Nobody thinks about it. So when I tell my friends that uh, I am a spiritist, they are like, what is it, some kind of religion? And I try to explain. It's actually a philosophy of life. You can have uh, a, many different religio religions and still be spiritual or you don't even need to have any type of religion, but you still can be spiritual. You have this belief in something that's bigger than you. And when you fully understand the spiritism, it's something so beautiful that it brings us like this uh, faith and bring us hope of a better tomorrow. 
So this is really something that helps us. Nowadays, people, because of the horrible history of religion in many different religions, you know, in the past, the Catholic, the Christians, they were slaughtered. And centuries passed, then come the Catholics and the Protestants, and they kill each other, and wars and wars for thousands of years. And the Muslims, the religion, kill so many people. It's very sad. It's very sad. What is supposed to bring hope and love? bring so much pain so people connected to religions it may be in past lives in this life they don't want to do anything with this i don't want no religion no but if you are able to overcome this and if you are able to to see this as something that there is no label it's something really god doesn't matter if you call god energy, if you call the source, whatever, is something that makes you feel good, that will, will help you. And even if you don't believe in, in Jesus, the man, you can understand his teachings, his teachings of forgiveness, of love, of uh, never do something bad to another person because that could happen to you or do to the others only what you would like to happen to you. So these teachings are teachings that you have to understand they are good. It's impossible to say they are bad. So this helps us to build faith. And with faith, we can overcome any type of difficulties in this life. So... I'm happy the video didn't disconnect yet. Oof. I'm I'm even afraid of moving <laughs> and doing something here, but I, I'm I'm glad it's uh, still working. So let's uh, let's continue here. I don't even know where I stopped, but uh, let me read this this uh, paragraph. In this way, oh, I think I stopped here. In this way, it is important to remember Alan Kardec's wise comment, item 14, chapter 5 of the Gospel according to Spiritism under the epigraph Suicide and Insanity. So we actually studied this in the Gospel according to Spiritism not many weeks ago. So I have the book here. The Gospel According to Spiritism. And uh, there is the item 14. Let me just see here. So the item 14 is short. I'm going to read it to you. The common resignation acquired in the manner of looking at earthly life and the faith in the future gives the spirit a serenity that is the best preservative against insanity and suicide. In fact, it is certain that the most cases of insanity are due to the troubles produced by the vicissitudes that the people do not have the strength to bear. However, if it due to the manner in which spiritism enables them to regard the things of this world, they end up accepting with indifference and even joy the reversals and disappointments that would render them desperate in other circumstances. It is obvious that this strength which puts them above such events protects their minds from the distress that I would jolt them otherwise. So a beautiful text, beautiful text, and the, and the brings us some light in the in the case of a suicide and insanity. So imagine, imagine a very very bad situation, and if we don't believe in a spiritual life, if we if we believe that when we die, 
everything disappears. There is the nothingness, as a lot of people say. So if it was the nothingness, then you would think, yeah, why to suffer? If, uh, if I disappear, if uh, when I disappear, there is nothing, then I should disappear right now. That's the understanding of most of the people that commit suicide. They think there is nothing after it. There are no consequences from their deeds. So they believe like if I'm suffering so bad, it's better I take my life. But it's not like that. Unfortunately, they wake up and they suffer a lot. So I participate of mediumistic meetings for many, many years. And um, many cases of suicide, they come back telling us atrocities. They describe the way they kill themselves and the amount of pain, tremendous as soon as they woke up. And to make things worse, they revive the same act like every five minutes. It's almost like something that continuously happens, continuously happens, and it brings them so much pain. So this is very sad. So us, spiritists, that we understand there is life after this life, because there is the real life that's the spiritual life, we have to help the people that have this type of thought. Say a positive word. A uh, few years ago, I read a singer that I used to like very, very much when I was young. I think her name is, I don't know how to pronounce, Sinead O'Connor, Sinead O'Connor, something like that. She was gorgeous. Her face was absolutely beautiful. And one day she decided to get bald. She was always like very irreverent. And uh, her voice was uh, so beautiful, was really like so soft. And uh, when it was, I believe, uh, two years ago, I read that she had tried uh, suicide. And uh, she had been in a clinic and she was being under treatment and, the, and uh, she was not doing any, any performances. I felt... Uh, it was so painful that I really wanted to communicate with her. But of course, she, she's famous and very difficult to get in touch. But I discover like a, some kind of agency or some, something that would hopefully would reach to her. And I just sent an email. I just sent an email giving her words of encouragement, explaining that she might not believe, but uh, the life doesn't finish. And whenever we do something terrible like that, we will wake up in the spiritual realm to face the consequences of that. In addition to it, there are consequences on earth too. Imagine the people that love her. Imagine her family. Imagine she had husbands and the kids and the, the fans. So many people that, uh, that loved her and love her will suffer. Her parents, I don't know if she still had parents, but it doesn't matter. This is something to make the person to think because sometimes when a person is in deep depression, it's feeling really, really low, they, they don't see anything. They don't understand anything. They just think about themselves. And if they have this poor understanding there is nothingness then they think I'm gonna finish with my misery and uh, if they make somebody if they are making somebody else upset then they like they even think like I'm gonna finish with their misery because I'm gonna disappear anyway what I'm telling you is that if you discover someone even if it's far from you it's not close the word of love and encouragement because maybe somehow that person will receive it. If they don't receive the email or the letter, they will receive the love that you are putting in it and the prayers you should be giving to them. So this is it's, it's very important. 
in our society nowadays is becoming like a very robotic. People are really disconnecting to each other. We are so connected to machines. We are so connected to machines. It's like, it's insane. And we make ourselves so busy. In the past, we used to talk on the phone all the time. It was like so great to talk on the phone. Nowadays, we barely talk on the phone. Everything is what's up. <sighs> yes, I'm talking, I'm talking for myself because I am a criminal of WhatsApp. And then, uh, you know, you start thinking, oh, I don't know, maybe this person is busy. I'm not going to call. I'm just going to leave a voice message. Because, yes, maybe the person is, is busy. But uh, it's different than when you talk to the person, you listen to the voice, you connect for that time. I actually miss it. So it's like, ah. Oh, in America, you know, everybody's like, oh, you have to, to, almost like you have to make an appointment to call me because I'm very busy. Oh, yes, we are all very busy. But, you know, it's so good to talk to our friends. It's so good to listen to the voice of someone you like and you haven't spoken in such a long time. So I'm making an effort to listen to the voice, listen to the message, and actually call the person back. And I just leave a message. And whenever the person have time, they call me back. It's so nice. Let's let's more let's become more connected to the people that we know. Let's get out of the computers too much. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. And let's meet more. That's actually why I created a group in my neighborhood. I absolutely love board games. Yes, I do. I love charades. I love games of mimic. I love drawing games. I love very interactive games. And I moved to a neighborhood that I didn't know anyone. And uh, I wanted to meet my neighbors, but everybody drives and they go inside their houses. You never see anyone. So I decided to go on a platform called Nextdoor. It's like Facebook of the neighbors. And uh, I posted if someone wanted to play board games and a lot of people answer. And uh, now I know so many of my neighbors and I love it. I love it. It's so good. It's so good when you know people that live nearby you. In the past, it was easy. Why? Because in the past, we actually stayed outside. I remember my, my family from a little tiny city in the middle of Brazil, they put the chairs outside. They sit outside. People talk on, pass on the streets. They're like, hey, Mr. This, Mrs. That. They know each other by their names. In big cities, I know it's impossible. But even in your neighborhood, sometimes people live in condominiums condominiums of houses or condominiums of, of buildings, you have no idea who lives there. Isn't that sad? That's why we have kids and they can't even play because we don't know who lives next door. How can they find friends? So, you know, let's make an effort to go in an elevator and say, hi, good morning. Hey, my name is Angela Hat. <laughs> yes. A bunch of smiles are going to return for you for sure because people get like, wow, somebody talking in the elevator? Wow. Anyway, let's just uh, finish the, the, the text because our time is flying. And today, because of all the, the, the bad connections and I don't see the video, <laughs> I'm not doing the gospel. I'm just going to finish, uh, finish it here. So what is saying here? The prayers are powerful. Yes, our prayers are extremely, extremely powerful. And uh, when we pray for a suicide, for example, they tell us they, for brief moments, they are actually able to sleep and not have that, uh, that bad movie happening again and again and again. So if we all could pray for a person that we know, or even if we don't know, 
they will benefit from it and they will be extremely thankful because they will receive the message who actually prayed for them and provided them that the minutes of a peace. So prayers are extremely painful, in, important in any, any case. Matthew, I also like drawing. Oh, Matthew, so you should, we should live together and you could participate of my board games. I, I also like to draw. I also like to draw a lot. I used to do a lot when I was younger, not, uh, not uh, as much as today. But board games are so much fun. <laughs> Let me just finish reading the, the text. Uh, the calm and resignation acquired in the manner of looking at earthly life and in the faith of the in the future give the spirit a serenity that is the best preservative against insanity and suicide. In fact, it is certain that most cases of insanity are due to the troubles produced by the vicissitudes that people do not have strength to bear. However, if due to, if due to the manner in which spiritism enables them to regard, in the, regard the things of this world, they end up accepting with indifference even joy, the reversals and disappointments that would render them desperate in other circumstances. It is obvious that this strength, which puts them above such events, protects their minds from the distress that uh, would jolt them otherwise. Spiritist friends, let us meet the charity that suppresses the poverty of the body, but let us not despise the assistance to the needs of the soul. Let us divulge the light of the Spiritist doctrine. Let us help our neighbor to discern and think. Paris, France, August 19. 1965 beautiful message beautiful message from the spirit Emmanuel so this this is what the what I said what brings happiness just summarizing we have five minutes so what brings happiness really to all of us is not material things material things brings you a temporary happiness that will pass very quickly but is giving something to somebody else is giving happiness to somebody else that really makes you happy so when you are able to help someone in distress to talk to a friend that's going in in some kind of a trouble some kind of problems and that you are able to take a few minutes and talk to this person, go to, the, to their house, extend a hand. This will bring them happiness, and this will bring you happiness. Even if whoever you helped didn't say thank you, or didn't fully express that they were thankful, but if later on you see that their lives are better, they actually improve, they got out of the situation, this will bring you happiness. So this is why we talk about the charity. So when we join a cause that helps people, like uh, now there is the Fraternity Without Borders, this organization that helps so many different countries in Africa, but also in Brazil with the crisis of Venezuela and, and many other issues, but the many, many different causes, even like animals. I absolutely love animals. Why don't you donate a few hours in a shelter just to go there, to pet the, the cats, to take the dogs out? This will bring you so much happiness. You are being useful to the poor animals. So there are so many things we can do. We can go to hospitals where the kids are there, they're sick, 
and then you can go there. There are so many different projects. You can read to them. You can play with them. There are so many beautiful things we can do. So we just need to have the strength and courage to do it. Because saying we are doing and never doing doesn't work. The happiness will come when we say something and we actually do it. And do not wait for others when you can do it alone. Yes, yes, yes. It's always so much better when we can, you can do it with someone else. Of course, it's so much easier. But if you don't find anyone to do something with you now, don't wait. Go and do it. Maybe later on they will join you. But if they don't, don't worry. You are doing your part. This is what is important. And let's really talk about joy, hope, faith. If you have ever the opportunity to read the second novel of Emmanuel, the spirit of this text, the title is 50 Years Later. There is a beautiful passage there that uh, the daughter of a very important political figure of the time falls in love with a slave. And both of them know their love is impossible because he's a slave. And in that time, the life of slaves were absolutely nothing. They were killed by anything. Anyway, long story short, he is sentenced to death because he's discovered to be a Christian. And she's desperate. She loves him so much. And she managed to go to visit him in jail to say goodbye. And she's despondent, she's crying, and he has this unshakable faith, this faith that can move mountains. And he's also upset, he's suffering, but he's controlling himself to give hope to her. And he tells her, I will be back, we will meet again. And he tells her about a dream that he had, and the spirit guide told him his trials are far from being finished and he will have to come back to earth to continue his work towards progress. So he tells her he asked Jesus to be able to reincarnate close to her. Doesn't matter if he will be a slave again or he will be of rich possess, possessions, but he wants to be close to her. And she's so despondent and so unhappy, but in that moment, she connects with his faith that she also has. She had, also has. And she says, yes, I believe you. And I will be able to recognize you among the thousands because our love connects us. So this is the faith that we have to work towards acquiring. I know it's so difficult when we read a book, we think, oh, this is impossible. Not really. Think about yourself. Think about something that you did. And when you fought in the past, you told yourself, I could never do it. I don't know how I did it. And remember, you did that little thing, but maybe in the future, you're going to be able to do a little thing bigger, bigger, bigger. And maybe one day we will have this type of unshakable faith of the first Christians, like in this beautiful book. So if you could read, the first book is 2,000 years ago, and the second at 50 years later. is the life story of the spiritual guide of Chico Xavier, Emmanuel. My friends, our time arrived. Thank you so much. And I'm very happy that despite all my technical difficulties, I cannot see myself. I'm happy you could hear me and I think you could see me. And uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having faith. <laughs> Even if we disconnected before, the second time was good. And I hope to see you again in two weeks. And uh, it's not going to be before Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to all of you, and I love you very much, and I'm very happy we are able to have this study and continue 
connected even just via video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye.